Don Terrace is here with us uh, right now to talk about uh, uh, mysteries and uh, in particular Sherlock Holmes. Uh, when I think of Sherlock Holmes, I think about Basil Rathbone. You know, to, to me, he seems like the, the gold standard for Sherlock Holmes. But uh, in these modern times, we have this uh, actor, Mr. Cumberbatch, Cumberbatch uh, who plays Sherlock Holmes. How does, in your mind, how does he compare and, and do the Sherlockians accept this guy, this new guy? Uh, there's a big controversy about uh, the Sherlock series and, and translating the, uh, the stories into uh, current times. Um, I was doing an interview not long ago and was asked a similar question and I said trying to, to choose the best Sherlock Holmes is uh, uh, like trying to, if you're a Chicago and you can relate to this, or maybe a New Yorker, uh, trying to, like trying to choose the best pizza, or well, the best single, hands down. Or, or the best single malt right, scotch. Hands down, <laughs> pizza. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but Basil, I, I think, is uh, uh, regained some ground that he lost when uh, Jeremy Jeremy Brett uh, mm -hmm. played Holmes in the Granada series. I think Jeremy Brett still is considered. Uh, among most Sherlockians, as the uh, the gold standard. Oh, really? Yeah. Not with, Basil Rathbone. No, with ba okay. but Basil, I think, follows fairly close by, and uh, and Benedict Cumberbatch has gotten uh, very good reviews too from from a lot of uh, Sherlockians you wouldn't ordinarily think would uh, would like his style of Sherlock. Right, and I'm astounded at uh, the effects that they use in this modern telling of Sherlock Holmes with Cumberbatch. Um, you know, the graphics that come up and the flashbacks and all that stuff is is that uh, is that part of the uh, the part that Sherlockians don't like kind of the the flashiness of it I think the added technology uh, does take away from the original stories to yeah. a certain degree um, but it's a part of our culture now. It's the part of the way we tell stories. Right. And uh, I, it doesn't bother me, I, you know, as a Sherlockian, it doesn't bother me at all. I think it translates very well. I think the series is a, uh, is a good series overall. It, it is fascinating. I, I, I love it. Uh, in addition, as we've mentioned, in addition to being a Sherlockian and the master of the hounds, uh, you're also an author and uh, you had the, uh, the park district that is in charge of the Gross Point Lighthouse. And there are these two books right here that uh, Don has put together. Don, uh, you're a fan, I know, of our mysteries, but you're also a fan of PBS in general. Tell, tell us what you like about PBS and why, uh, why you're a, a big fan of that. Well, I think primarily that the, the, the programming is very good. Um, consistently good uh, also there it's commercial free and by being commercial free uh, you get a chance to really focus on a program of interest and you get more out of it it's not uh, an interruption every five minutes every ten minutes and uh, and then with five minutes of commercials after that uh, uh, like cable is turned into uh, so I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to see a show in that kind of format now you're you're an anthropologist, I understand, mm -hmm. uh, educated anthropologist, and so that makes you a scientist officially. <laughs> so there must be some uh, some of the science programs that you really enjoy too. Uh, they're the ones that uh, I remember most uh, as a child growing up. It was always something special to turn on uh, PBS and see a National Geographic show. Uh, of their uh, latest discovery of uh, one kind or another. Right. And really, uh, as I said before, the, the lack of commercials, you're able to get inside the story a lot more than you uh, ordinarily would with, uh, with interruptions. And yeah, it was, uh, PBS allows you more time to tell a story. Absolutely. You don't get on commercial TV. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anthropology and mysteries sort of go hand in hand. Can you explain that that linkage for us? I mean, Sherlock Holmes apparently relied a lot on that anthropological uh, viewpoint of the world, if you will. Well, I can only explain it from an anthropological uh, standpoint and, and my experience. Um, my specialization in anthropology was uh, museum studies and material cu culture studies, which is uh, inferring uh, sociocultural data from uh, the collections in museums, the artifacts that, uh, that they have. And this is essentially what, uh, what uh, Holmes is all about, is being able to tell 
a lot about a person from seeing that person or a lot about an artifact by picking the artifact up, examining it, uh, and discerning what it might, it might have been used for, um, who it may have belonged to, or you know what part it, it took in a crime scene. So it sounds like detective work has its roots in anthropology. I think that the forensic science has its roots in Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, it does indeed. Uh, Don Terrace is an expert on uh, Sherlock Holmes. He's the master of the hounds, by the way, the uh, Hounds of the Baskerville uh, organization based here in Chicago. And he is also um, the guy in charge of uh, the lighthouse up there in, in Evanston, the beautiful uh, Gross Point lighthouse. And he's written a couple of books related to lighthouses, one about the actual Gross Point lighthouse, and this one, Lighthouses of Chicago Harbor. If you love lighthouses, uh, these are beautiful books to have and to read. Uh, Don, it's been great uh, having you here on the Mystery Marathon. Uh, really insightful uh, stuff and uh, really glad you, you could uh, join us. Uh, Thank you tonight. very much. Yeah.